secret packs on today's Wine Library TV. Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nur, Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And we're gonna learn a little bit about wine today because there are thousands, and Mott, I said it, thousands of you that ordered a secret pack, either in a two pack or a one pack, and now, they are unveiled, and there is a white wine, and there are two red wines. Two of the red wines are from the Roussillon region, which I just visited, and that's the theme of that. And a white wine, because I'm always going to push for you to open up and realize how great white wines are, especially white Bordeaux, such an undervalued, room, room. that's a siren, weak, siren opportunity for value buying because they are unknown, unvalued, and undervalued in the US market, and that is the wine we're going to start with first. Come on, I'm getting right into it, I'm gonna get a big rinse. I'm, I'm gonna rile up all the maniacs who yell at me for big rinses. So there you go, what you gonna do? Anyway, the first wine that we have is the Chateau Cantilly 2003 White Grob, 22 US dollars, 91 points wine spectator. Uh, this comes from the family that does Chateau Smith Hot Lafitte. This is a Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon blend. And uh, I'm excited about this first wine. And so uh, hopefully you have this at room temperature. If you have a chill, that's fine. Secret pack people. Um, let's give it a little bit of a whirl. Big day. A little Casey Case in action today, Mod. I've got a lot of shout outs. First and foremost, a little bit late, but big shout out to Alex from David Aaron Kane. Uh, K. Uh, Big shout out to you, my friend. Uh, Vicky, who came down from the, you know, Cape Cod, Boston, you know, that New England, that's what we call it, New England area for the Vaniac party. I don't know if you heard this, blew out her tires, brakes, it was three hours late, it took her like 19 hours to get here. This insane story, she needs a big shout out, uh, cause I think she's in the hole for like six, I think it cost her like six G's to come to Wine Library this Saturday, so Vicky, I apologize, but you know, at least then you got to come here and hang out with us and drink some vino. Um, so that uh, belated birthday to Susan Spaulding, a huge maniac. Susan, we love you. You've been here from the get-go. Uh, and a happy anniversary from Don Reynolds to his wife Diana. And what is more sexy and beautiful and loving and romantic than a shout-out from the wine guy in Jersey on your anniversary? Mott, can you think of anything better? And I want to give a shout-out. That's why I got this here. It's kind of lame and very simple but very, very cool, especially if you're into the Vino thing, selling a good time, a very interesting uh, novel. I like doing the, uh, this is so ghetto, like cover graphics by Mikey G. I love this, but it's killer. Uh, great story about being a salesperson in the wine industry. Nice little look uh, into things and uh, huge, huge shout out for this book. Mott, link it up. I think a lot of you would enjoy this. It's kind of edgy, it's kind of edgy. Just saying, it's kind of edgy. Big shout out to Kenny Skelpo, who made that book, who I know very, very well. He's a Jets fan too, but a very cool book, very cool. Um, so we did that, and now we think we can focus on the vino, Mott. Um, you know, it's a really gloomy day. I mean, the ener it's tough to keep the energy and the thunder going with the gloomness factor that we're getting. Well, I guess we can't get Mott to say anything. Anyway, I was trying to say silence as long as I ever have on Wine Library TV, but he looked me dead in the face and said, I'm not saying anything. So I guess he's not saying anything. Say it with me, Vaniacs. We're going to give this wine a sniffy sniff. And right off bat, you can see that there's an intro... Very interesting nose. Really interesting. Do you get that little, like, smokiness? Coming through a lot of lemon zest that's coming through for me here. Uh, beautiful lemons, really. Almost like older lemons. You know when they start shrinking down? When the lemons start to shrivel? You know, they start to shrivel as you get older. Not. You know, that, that's what happens with the lemons. So, that's kind of interesting. Get a little bit of like a, a woody kind of component. Almost oaky esque Which is unusual for a Sauvignon Blanc Sauvignon. But it's nice. Uh, there is some, uh, there's definitely some oakiness. A little wood, a little, huh? little oak monster trying to peek its eye through. Let's give it a whirl. White Bordeaux have been underrated for so long. And I think right away what you'll feel, Vaniacs, as you taste along with me is there's a tremendous weight to this white wine. And this really makes me think of fish. I mean, I'd be really excited right now if we had like a Dover Sole to match up with this.
great heavy weight, great complexity, nice vibrant fruit, a little apple core, little drips of honey. The whole apple honey cheese thing is really going on in here. Great weight, nice polish, nice length, very vibrant and explosive, but a very baked apple kind of thing going on. If your grandma, like my grandma, ever put apples into the stove and took them out and said, eat this for dessert, you don't need ice cream. I want ice cream, eat this. Sorry, grandma. That's what this tastes like. Just really great complexity. Very taken aback by the wine's length and explosiveness and richness factor. This is not what you see in Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand or Sancerre or California. And I think, I, I hope you enjoy that factor of this wine. It's very different and it's got great complexity. Very much a food wine. If you've got some food right now, put it in your mouth, drink along with this wine. I think you'll see a totally different complexity coming into it its own with this wine. This is what we call classic food wine. Just vibrant acidity, but it's integrated. And the length on the back end. And there's this just very interesting, I wanna say chalky meets lemon. And the viscosity of this wine is very interesting. Um, I definitely get the honey component. The honey flavor is really a dominant factor in this. And if you like honey cluster of oats or things of that nature, cereal, you're gonna be gravitating towards a bottle of wine like this. I like this wine. I think it's a very well-made wine. I, I respect it. It's really in a nice age length right now. So I think it's very drinkable, coming along very strongly. A wine that can last another three years. Very much a fish wine. Bring out the Gruber, the, you know, Bring out the Dover Sole, salmon. I mean, this is just a very well-made flounder. I mean, very well-made white wine for a fish pairing, much more than some of the higher acidity white wines that a lot of people use in those scenarios. Uh, I'm going to go 90 points on this white wine. Uh, very happy with it. Uh, definitely in the range of the wine spectator. Hope you liked it as well. What i really like you to do is let this sit a little bit, maybe even decant it. Uh-huh, I'm flipping the switch on you. Throw a little decanter on this, maybe even pop it in vacuum and try it tomorrow. You're gonna see a lot of exotic secondary flavors. I get a little hint of back-end pineapple on the end here. Um, I think this wine could be very much a wine that you can drink over the next three days just by putting the cork on your, on your you know, top of the bottle and let it sit on your counter. Watch it evolve, a very educational vino, why I had it in this pack, and uh, I'm excited about the way it's performing. Good start to the show. Nice stuff. Lilacs. Very floral. Yeah, very nice. Dandelions. Nice. Les Mosul. This is part of that face wine series. We did the rosé last time. It didn't work out. So we're coming right strong with the Cote de Roussillon, which is a Carillon, Grenache, and Syrah blend. Uh, this wine is $19.99 normally. Um, a little bit less because it's in your pack. Let's give this a whirl. Both of these wines have been open for about two hours. If you feel you can want to do that, you can pause me and come back. But um, that's where we're at with the uh, airing of these two wines. Um, I'm really excited about this. I really want to get into it for you guys. So let's pour it. Let's give it a sniffy sniff together now. You know, like a family. I'm all about the hugs, you know? That's what we do here. Hug it out, baby. Sniffy sniff. Now I think you're gonna be excited as you smell this wine. Vaniacs tasting along. Oh, big up to all you new people. I know there's a bunch of you now sitting watching me for the first time, so I love that, right, Mod? I mean, people have the tasting packs, they bring their friends. Big up to all of you. Hit me up anytime, Gary at winelibrary.com. I shouldn't do that. My email's out of. I'm like 2,600 behind now. I'm gonna say it again. I apologize. If you have an urgent message, you gotta put urgent, 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 or email Mod. That always works. Anyway, um, welcome. Uh, there's 430 episodes or so for you to catch up on, but I'm glad you're here and I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you like the first wine. Really get into this wine. Let me let me speak to you noobs first. N00DBS. Um, you've gotta smell wine. Too many people are not smelling wine and that's a huge mistake. So please do that. Good. Give it one more snippy sniff. Let's give it a whirl. Big mouthfeel on this wine. Nice, let's give it one more whirl. Great tannins, mm. Oh, this is gonna go over well. I know a lot of you like this wine right now. This is hitting a perfect balance of new world and old world. Great richness, great complexity. Cassis 
for days, folks. Cassis for days. This wine is loaded with cassis. Just gorgeous cassis flavors. If you've never had cassis, you have to go to Whole Foods or Wegmans or Wild Oats or whatever the heck you have to go to, the farmer's market, and you need to put this on your palate. This is how you train a palate. Big shout out to episode 148. It might be time to link that up, Ma. Link that, baby. Link it up. Episode 148. Um, this has great cassis flavors, just gorgeous. I also get really great black raspberry flavors on this wine. Just a gorgeous integration of the tannins and the fruit. I enjoy beautifully the gorgeous Starbucks mocha latte back end flavor on the finish of this wine. Great length, huge body count, um, really solid. Better than I rem you know, even remember thinking this was going to be. I mean, just like, it's just better than I thought it was going to be. barrel sample of this. I don't remember which ones I had, the Rivaset or this one, but this is good. Ma, try this for me. I'm curious what your palate thinks of this wine. I like it. You like it? Very interesting wine to me. It's a rarity when you see a wine this complex with secondary, there's a little bit tar bubbles going on. You remember when you were a kid, it was hot outside, they just paved something, those little bubbles, you'd pop them, you'd lick it. Come on, you know you did. Second tier tar flavors, little venison action once again, which I adore. So it's meaty and it's gamey. And it's like, you know, just like lunch meats action on the second flavor, but it's so covered up by the cassis. And do you taste that cherry flavor on the mid palate? Very gorgeous, beautiful. Like, Really dark, rich, perfect cherries. You know, you get that batch, it's perfect. It's not mushy and Perfect cherries. Just a very interesting wine that appeases very new drinkers, but has so much complexity and secondary and third tier flavor profiles that I think the most utmost wine experts could enjoy. This, my friends, is a double bubble squared. Double bubble in, it takes care of experts and noobs, and it also is drinkable now, but will absolutely be put away for five to seven years and really explode. One of the better wines in a long time. What a shame, a pity on this silly packaging and screw top that will make a lot of people presume and assume that this is not a serious wine. And you know what happens when you assume, Mott. You know what happens, and that's what would happen in this scenario, and I'd probably be guilty of it as well, and this is why you gotta taste the vinos and put them in your palate. This is an exceptional wine from Les Mus and I've got to say, it's got the, mus it's the muscles. Um, I'm really darn excited about this wine. I'm gonna go 91 plus points in this wine, completely rocked it out, and uh, I'm going to be shocked if there's people that are tasting this, and there's a lot of packs out there, and please leave a comment that are not gonna like this wine. This is one of the better wines we've put out there in a long time just for its overall capabilities. That's what I'm looking for. The first one I can understand, you know, for especially for a lot of people that are used to high acid and lighter and crisper and more fruity white wines, that could be a controversial wine, really up my alley. This second one, this covers the fast, I mean, this is the kind of wine, back in the day when I really bought for the wine every day and tasted wine, I would absolutely buy this because this is going to cover a lot of different people. Just love the Roussillon area, you know, near the Spanish border in France. Catalonia, you know, that whole area of Mott. Really interesting stuff. And speaking of which, we're gonna go right to one of the AOCs in uh, Roussillon, and that is Fitou. Fitou is F-I-T-O-U. Uh, a lot of people have not been familiar with this area. And what we have is the Breton Berger uh, 2004 Cuvée Ancestral. Uh, this is a blend of 40% Carignan, and the rest is Grenache uh, and Syrah. Uh, very small producer. This wine rolls in at 16 US dollars, which is always a problem because that is Vinny Testaverde's number, you damn traitor. Uh, but we'll deal with it. I mean, what do the Patriots? I'm a jet for life. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, let's see what's going on here. Let's see what's going on here. 16 votes, great color, really dark again from the Roussillon region in France, an area that deserves a lot more recognition and when we correct our dollar situation, I think has a lot of opportunity to do a lot of damage. Very dark, very, very black, very pretty. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Now isn't this interesting, my friends? 
Vaniacs, you're getting a lesson. I'm excited. You know how often I talk about tomato juice and V8? I talk about it a lot. A lot, right? Well, here's your opportunity. A lot of you are going to be able to knock out this flavor on the nose and establish what I mean when I talk about wines in the future. This wine has a heavy tomato juice component to it. It smells exactly like drinking Campbell, like smelling Campbell's tomato soup, for example, or V8. But even more towards the tomato style. Now as it's aerating out, it's getting a second layer of cocoa powder. You know, like a like hot chocolate mix. Very fascinating, very fascinating. I mean, just similar area, totally different noses, totally different complexities. I get a beautiful basil on the nose as well. I mean, this is almost like a nice home-cooked Italian meal over here. Right? Smell this, my man. Get a mott involved today. Oh, yeah. Right? Crazy. You, you smell it? Yeah. Pretty wild, right? So, very interesting. Dying to give this wine a whirl. Let's do that. Great flavor profile, nice fruit. I really like the plums <laughs> that are coming through in this wine. Um, really layered, a lot more complex, a little bit backward and awkward. This one you gotta give a little bit more thought to. Not as easily and like definite as the last wine for the broad market. Mott? You like the last one better for sure. It's a little more overall. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is a, this is a little bit more, and yeah, the finish is tough. This is a very bitter and tannic, big monstrous finish. Very green, gets very like raw asparagus kind of flavors on the finish. Uh, I, you know? It's not bad. No, it's not bad. And, it, and it's really fun with food. This is this wine would do a lot of damage with a steak or, or a pigeon. Gorgeous with pigeon. Get me a pigeon with some, a lot of pepper and this wine would pair up beautifully. Um, I get really wild raspberry flavors on the beginning and then it gets very funkified. You know, it gets a little cheesy. Not manure, definitely not like, you know, burgundy-esque or anything in that nature. Just complex, um, really interesting dark fruit components. That's where the plums come in, the blackberries, maybe like sour berries, right? You know when you eat berries and they're not as fruity, they're maybe a little too young, and they're, they're bit, a little more bitter? That's what's going on with this wine. I kind of like it. It's got more charisma than the last wine, and it's even more complex than the last wine, even though this has shocking complexity for a fruit forward wine. By the way, Australian fans, you need to try this wine. I think this could really open you up to a different world. Anyway, back to this wine. Well made, I'm a little bit caught off guard by its finish, which is awkward and tough. Um, so that concerns me a little bit. But it's pretty darn well made and a very good producer from a very interesting area in France. Um, good length, really nice finish, still tasting it. Man, do I hope you have cheese on your plate or in front of you right now, which, by the way, because of the tasting part of it, I think you do right now, so that makes me happy. Get the cheese into your palate, test it out. I think you can find some gorgeous combos going on as the oils and the fat of the cheese layer your palate. You'll get a totally different flavor component for this wine. It will change on you. It's starting to open up a little bit more for me as well, which I'm enjoying. There's like a uh, very pretty secondary, I don't want to call it licorice, but there is a candified kind of thing going on here. This is just good. I mean, I am just clearly on a kick about the south of France right now. Solid wine. I'm gonna go 89 points. I, def I can't get over to finish. The finish is just not there. And that's really what took this away from being even better than the last wine. But still a solid effort. And for people that are a little bit more serious about vino and, and are kind of staying away from fruit, and not more serious, that's not fair. People are just find themselves uh, attracted to funny things. Like for example, I loved and have always loved growing up girls that had chicken pock marks on their face. If you had a chicken pock scar on your face, I like you more. I was more attracted to you. Some people may think that's weird. Most of you that are watching are thinking that's weird. But that's what I'm trying to articulate with this wine. This wine has a different little vibe going on. And if you're looking for a little different vibe than fruit, let's say, then this is a wine I think you need to explore. It will expand your palate and that is the key 
to the entire Vaniac movement. Question of the day, where do you hang out? That's how I roll. Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not. Stay well.